Hi, I'm Jeff Gerard with the Concrete Countertop Institute, and I'd like to talk to you about using baking soda in your concrete. An easy way to create natural stone-like texture in your concrete is to use baking soda in the molds. Baking soda is also known by its chemical name, sodium bicarbonate. The areas where the concrete touches the baking soda freezes up to hold the shape and texture of the baking soda. This is because the sodium bicarbonate acts as an accelerator in the concrete, causing it to rapidly stiffen. The surface of the concrete that touches the baking soda stiffens to form a crust that can wrinkle, crack, and deform during casting, and this is where the stone-like texture comes from. I first learned about using baking soda with concrete to create these textures from a student back in late 2007 or very early in 2008. I can't really remember exactly when. He was involved in the cast stone industry and told me that it was an old school technique used to create the look of weathered limestone, fossilized coral, and other natural stone textures. And the first time I made something using baking soda was for a cool project I did in May 2008 for wall panels under a bar in my condo, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. I wanted the panels to exactly match the pattern of a zebra rug under the dining room table. It was a really easy process, so here's how I did it. Here's the rug with the pattern, and the wall panels themselves, there's three of them, each are about 40 inches tall, or a little over a meter tall, and the three panels are about 10 feet wide total. So each panel is roughly square. Now the rug isn't that wide, so I had to stretch the pattern and extend it out to make the pattern fit the space. But that was pretty easy to do, and I'll show you how I got the pattern into the molds. Now with every project, you start with template. So here there are three individual template pieces for each of the panels. And you can see that one panel has a, an electrical switch in the corner, one has an electrical outlet kind of in the middle, and the third has a notch to fit around a copper bar. So each panel had to be shaped to fit its space and accommodate the openings for those outlets and switches. To capture the pattern, I bought a roll of clear acetate film, laid it on the carpet, and then used black Sharpie to trace, and you can see that right here, trace the pattern onto the film. And I used the letters B, the letter B, to indicate where the brown was in the, in the carpet. It was just a way of designating which patterns were dark and which were light. I then flip the film over, and in this photo, the film has been flipped over, and I'm tracing the pattern onto the underside of the film using a red grease pencil. In some areas, I had to change the pattern a little to accommodate the outlet or the switch. And in this case, you can see right here, I had to stretch the pattern so that it would fit around the outlet. I ended up modifying it even more and making it wider so that the space around the outlet and the outlet cover was more balanced. Now, the reason why I used grease pencil on the underside of the film was so that I could rub the top surface of the film and transfer it onto uh, the mold surface. Now, I didn't transfer directly into the bottom of the molds themselves, which were just very shallow melamine boxes. What I did and what I wanted was the pattern to not only have baking soda texture, but I wanted it to have more um, depth to it as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm transferring the pattern onto thin hardboard that's covered in melamine. So this is 3 16 inch masonite that has a melamine coating on it. And after I transferred all the pattern, I then cut it out with a jigsaw like a puzzle. So I had all these pieces that matched the pattern in the rug, and I then laid them into each template. So I used a black grease pencil to indicate which of the pieces were going to go away. And they were used just to be able to align the, the cutouts that I wanted to keep so that they were positioned correctly and, and allowed the pattern to be aligned across the panels. So once all these were placed and then glued down, I just used construction adhesive. I removed the, uh, the waste pieces that were marked with an X. Um, and then the, all the edges were then caulked with silicone caulk. 
this not only sealed the edges of the masonite, but it also helped the concrete release from the molds more easily. So this is very, very ordinary, simple stuff. These little black squiggles are silicone that I drew into the molds to create fissures and veins that I later filled in with copper colored epoxy, and you'll see that later on. And this is where the baking soda comes in. Um, I'm just using ordinary household baking soda. It doesn't matter what brand. Uh, for this purpose, they are all the same. It doesn't matter. And I'm using it dry. And the only thing I did to it was dump it into a cup and break up any clumps so that there were no giant lumps. Although you can cast over lumps of baking soda and it looks gives a different texture. It gives an interesting texture. So um, how much baking soda you put down um, and what the surface texture is influences what the concrete will uh, look like when you cast on it. Here I'm applying a couple millimeters uh, layer of, of baking soda. It's, so it's not just a dusting, it's not just a powdery dusting on top of these areas. Like these areas have not been done yet, and, and this area, and this area, and these two little spots have been done. Have, you know, the baking soda has been done. And, and you can see up in this upper corner where I've just started to put a little bit, bit of baking soda. And I just used a, a dry, stiff bristle brush to, to even the texture out so it didn't look too artificial. But you can do whatever you want. The process is pretty easy. And I didn't worry if there was any excess baking soda. You can see here where some of the baking soda has uh, spilled over into the molds. And I wasn't too worried about just a, a few light dustings of baking soda here and there. And you, you'll actually see the results of this when I, uh, later on when I show the photo of the finished piece. Now, the concrete I use is a very old school, basic aggregate base mix. This is pea gravel and sand and cement and, uh, and some other ingredients to make a very high compressive strength concrete. But these are just wall panels that, you know, I just had to be able to handle them. So they, they, there's no reinforcing, there's no fibers. They're plenty strong enough to, to cast and handle and, and then glue up onto the wall. To prevent the baking soda, which was just dry, it was just sitting there, from being disturbed by pouring the concrete, I poured it in between the areas that had the baking soda. And this kept the, the concrete from flowing and, and scraping or smearing the baking soda. Um, that gives a different look, and that's not something that I really wanted. So I poured in between and let the, the, the spaces overfill and then flow over onto the baking soda. And this gives a, a more um, less disturbed look. So you kind of preserve the, the look of the baking soda. And there were some areas where it did end up pushing and plowing the baking soda, and that created an interesting texture um, that you'll see at the, at the end. Here the forms are filled, and where the, the concrete didn't totally overfill, overflow onto the baking soda, I just used the gloved hand to pat the concrete and let the, the pressure and the, the, the movement of the concrete roll over the baking soda and, and merge within itself. And you can kind of see the influences of this in the finished piece. But basically, I was trying to cover the baking soda without disturbing it. Uh, there's, there's lots of different techniques that you can use uh, to cast onto this. If you, if you did, say, want to really aggressively move the concrete around, you could uh, first fill the forms and then use your hands to push the concrete around, and that's going to wrinkle the, the baking soda and, and create um, a lot more fissures and wrinkles and, and texture in the concrete. Here, the, the baking soda is just dry, and you can't put a dry baking soda on a vertical surface but if you pre-dampen it with water and make a very thick paste, uh, that paste will stick to a vertical surface. So there's, there's ways to get texture on a vertical wall too. And that's not the only way to do it. Once the pieces were cured overnight, they were demolded, and uh, here's what it looks like freshly out of the mold. Most of the baking soda didn't dissolve, and a lot of it stayed stuck to the mold. Uh, and in here you can kind of see, especially like right here, excess baking soda that's still on the surface. Now baking soda dissolves in water very, very easily, so cleanup is super simple. Just hose it off and use a, a stiff bristle brush to scrub out any um, areas that are that just don't dissolve on their own. But there's nothing special you, you have to do. Um, if you really wanted to get every trace of baking soda out of there, just do an acid etch with you know a dilute muriatic acid solution 
And as you know from high school chemistry, an acid and a base, and uh, baking soda is basic, uh, those will react and neutralize each other. And that will dissolve, the residue dissolve very easily too. So it's really simple to clean up. There's not much you have to do to it. One thing you will also notice is the difference in appearance. So the areas that had the baking soda are lighter and the areas that didn't have baking soda are darker. And that's another effect that baking soda has on concrete. And the color of your concrete, whether it's gray based cement or white based cement, uh, will influence that. Here, this is a great Portland cement based concrete. So it's the effect of the baking soda is even more pronounced. But you should always expect the baking soda to influence the appearance of your concrete. I mean, that's why we're doing this, right? Um, once the panels were washed and mostly dry, um, I polished the tops of the high, the high areas that were smooth, and those were the low spots in the forms, to boost the contrast and to give not only um, a, a, a visual contrast of, of, sheen, of shade, but also of sheen. So you can see there's a, a slight sheen on the polished areas and then the low spots, which had the baking soda are rough and, and dull. And this this here and this here, and you can see those little squiggles, those are where the, the silicone squiggles were drawn in. And you'll see what after what the what they look like after they're filled with, with um, epoxy. Applying the panels to the wall are just like you'd put any kind of tile on a wall with commercial thin set, so there's nothing special here. Here's after the seams are caulked and the cover plates put on. Uh, this is the area where I expanded the pattern to make sure the, the cover plate wasn't crowding the pattern so it looks a little more balanced and natural. This whole project took maybe two days, so it's very fast. Um, I used a copper metallic pigment uh, commonly used in uh, like epoxy floors or uh, car paint. It's kind of all the same stuff. The stuff for car paint's a lot more refined and more expensive, but it doesn't take a lot. And this is just a clear epoxy. And that's to kind of tie this panel in with the copper bar that's over here. And finally, another view of the other end of the bar. You can definitely see more of the texture from the overhead pendant lights. Now the three inch thick walnut bar top that sits on top of this whole thing isn't isn't in place right at the moment. Uh, so the, the lights are washing down the face of the panel. They'll be more concealed once the bar's in. And here's a close up of one of the areas. And this really shows what baking soda can do for you. There's a lot going on here, so let me show you. Remember the concrete that I used had um, pea gravel in it. And you can actually see, like here's a little piece of pea gravel here and here and here and here and all these sort of roundish lumps are the pea gravel that's pushing into the thicker layer of baking soda so the heavy stone kind of made an impression into the baking soda and that's why i applied a thicker layer of baking soda i've cast you know after i did these panels i've cast um, even much thicker layers of baking soda like almost three-eighths of an inch thick in some areas and so if you have uh, aggregates or other things in your mix, they will push into the baking soda and create the, the impressions uh, in the baking soda. So it's a way to add even more texture by using a lot more baking soda. Now, if, if you want to see what it looks like with just a light dusting, this is the these are the areas where um, some of the excess baking soda spilled over into the, the empty parts of the mold. And so here's the edge you know, the caulking is right along this edge where it's a little bit rounded. And then this line here with little voids in the lighter lighter areas right here, that's what it looks like when you just have a little light dusting of baking soda. And this area right here is also evident of that. More close-ups, more texture. You can see I was really going for a lot of texture in this and the contrast. And this sort of peninsula here had a lot of excess baking soda spilled into it. And I didn't bother cleaning it out because again, I wanted the texture. And this shot here, I have another closer close up view of it, really highlights what happens when the concrete pushes and plows the baking soda. 
and it collects in between. So remember, I poured the concrete into the low spots, and that's this area here and this area here. And as this, these areas overflowed and flowed together, that concrete flowed across the baking soda. I'm going to show you a little close-up of it right here. And I might have used my hands to push this. I can't remember. This was, again, 14 years ago. The, the, the concrete, remember, the surface of the concrete has stiffened up. It, it stiffens up very quickly, you know, within seconds. And that crust doesn't flow and blend into itself. It, it just, it's very thin, but it, and it's not super hard. It's, it's more clay-like at that point, but it, it pushes and plows the baking soda, which collects. And as this bulge merges this way and this bulge merges this way, there's a line of baking soda that collects in between and the two, you know, fronts of concrete don't blend into each, each other. And that crust preserves all this texture. So here's a little uh, cracking and some wrinkling. And I find this to be fascinating. And it's, it's just a matter of that's what happens when you put um, a thicker layer of baking soda, call it a, roughly an eighth of an inch thick, maybe a little bit heavier. And then you physically push that layer of concrete horizontally to kind of make it smear and slide the, baking, the layer of baking soda together. So the more you manipulate the concrete during casting and immediately after casting, the more texture and, and interesting things that are happening. So it's a very simple and easy and old school way of creating lots of natural looking texture. So experiment, have fun, and uh, share what you've done. I'd like to see it.